and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is teacher Ana de Guzman and our topic for today is problem solving involving independent events. This is under the probability of compound events for grade 10 quarter 3. So whenever we say independent events, events are not affected by the previous events. So two events are independent if the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of the other event, meaning the events has no influence to each other. So it is also known as the probability with replacement. So in symbol, that is the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B or the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So take note that the probability of A is equal to the number or event in A divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, the probability of B, that is the event in B, okay, divided by the total number of outcomes. So, if two events A and B are independent, then the probability of both events occurring is the product of their corresponding probability of A and the probability of B. Here are some real applications of independent events. So, say for instance, the color of your, your hair has absolutely no effect on where you work. Number two, that is rolling a pipe on a single six-sided die and landing on heads after tossing a coin. Number three, is choosing a seven from a deck of cards, replacing it, and then choosing an ace as the second card. Number four, rolling a pipe on a single six-sided die and then rolling one on a second roll of the die. And number five, Buying a lottery ticket and finding a peso on the floor. Take note your odds of finding a peso does not depend on you buying a lottery ticket. So those are the applications of independent events. idea on independent events so let's move on to solving more problems so let's have number one consider the box contain 14 green 12 okay, blue mass and 9 white mass a mass is drawn at random and the color is noted and put back inside the box then another mass is drawn at random find the probability that the first is green and the second is white so take note that in the first row, the probability of getting green mass is, okay, that is the probability of A, so that is 14 out of 35. So why out of 35? Because if we will add 14 plus 12 plus 9, that is the total of 35. And there are 14 green mass. Next, in the second row, the probability of getting white mass is, Okay, the, okay, we will put that one as in symbol. The probability of B is 9 out of 35. Why 9 out of 35? Because we have 9 white mass out of, okay, 14 plus 12 plus 9 is equal to 35. So, again, so we have, we are looking for the probability of green and white. So, that is probability of A times probability of B. But the probability of A is equal to 14 over 35, while the probability of B is 9 over 35. Multiply together, so we come up with 168 all over 1,225, and reduce it by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 7, so we come up with 24 over 175. So therefore, the probability if the first green mass and the second mass is... 24 over 175. Consider problem number 2. A pair die is tossed twice. Find the probability of getting a 3 or 4 on the first toss and a 1, a 2 or 3 in the second toss. So take note that, okay, we will let the probability of A, so that is the probability of 3 or 4, that is 2 out of 6. So, Remember, there are six numbers in all, okay? 
So, we will get 2. Why 2? Because we have 3 or 4. Next one. So, the probability of B, so that is the probability of 1, 2, or 3. So, there are 3 numbers out of 6. So, that is 3 over 6. Next. So, there are independent because, okay, getting 3 is not dependent on getting 1, 2, or 3, and so on. Okay? So, the probability of A and B is equal to the product of the probability of A and the probability of B. So, having said that one, we have 2 over 6 times 3 over 6. So, this is equal to 6 over 36. So, reduce this. So, we come up with 1 over 6. So, therefore, we can say that the probability of getting a 3 or 4 on the first toss and 1, 2, or 3 in the second toss is 1 over 6. Let's move on to problem number 3. A jar contains 1 red, 5 green, 3 blue, and 7 yellow, and 4 white marbles. A marble is chosen at random from the jar. After replacing it, a second marble is chosen. What is the probability of choosing a yellow and then a green marble? So take note that we will let the probability of A, that is the probability is of yellow, so that is 7 out of 20. Why 7 out of 20? Because we have 7 yellow and we will add all 1 plus 5 plus 3 plus 7 plus 4 that is equal to 20 in all. Next, the probability of B, so we will let that is the probability of green, so this is 5 over 20. So again, so we'll simply add 1 plus 5 plus 3 plus 7 plus 4 as our denominator, and we have 5 as green. So take note that they are independent. So the probability of A and B is equal to the product of the probability of A and the probability of B. So, replacing the value of probability of A and probability of B simply as 7 over 20 times 5 over 20. So, we have 35 over 400 and reduce it okay, by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 5. So, we have 7 over 80. So, therefore, the probability of choosing a yellow and then green marble is 7 over 80. Let us consider problem number four. So a market research survey found that 80% of people in the Philippines like adobo. If two people are selected at random, what is the probability that A, both like adobo, on the other hand, that the first one likes adobo and the second one isn't? So for the first one and the second likes uh, adobo too, so we will have the probability of the intersection of A and B that is the same as the product of the probability of A times the probability of B. Since we have 80% of the people in the Philippines like adobo, so that is the probability is 80%, and the probability of the second person is also 80%. So get the product, so this is equal to 0.80 times 0.80, which is equal to 0.64 or 64%. On the other hand, first one lies adobo and the second one isn't. So what we're going to do is to get the probability of A intersection B. So it means that is the probability of A times the probability of B. So the probability of those people who like adobo is 80%. However, those people who don't like adobo, that is 1 minus 0.80 or 8. Uh, 1 minus 80%. So take note that 1 minus 0.80 or 1 minus 80% that is considered as the complement method. So again, simplifying it further, 0.80 times 1 times 1 minus 0.80, this is equal to 16%. So therefore, the probability that two people selected randomly like adobo is 64%. And the probability that the first one likes adobo and the second one isn't is 16%. So let's move on to problem number 5. 
A school survey found that 3 out of 10 students walk to school. If 3 students are selected at random with replacement, what is the probability that all 3 walk to school? So let's capitalize the word or the expression that all 3 walk to school. So if we will let the first student, so it means he is walking to school, or oh, he walks to school, so that is 3 over 10. On the other hand, second student also, he walks to school, so that is 3 out of 10. The third student is also walks to school, so we have 3 over 10. Now, if we will get the intersection, or the probability of the intersection of A, intersection B, intersection C, so this is equal to the product of the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. So we simply substitute the given values, 3 over 10 is equal to 0.30 or 0.3. So we have 0.3 or 0.30 times 0.30 times 0.30. So this is equal to 0 0.027 or this is equal to 2.7%. So again, therefore, we can say that the probability that all three walks to school is 2.7%. So that ends our discussion on problem solving involving independent events. Again, this is Teacher Oni de Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.